something bad happens to you, are you guys going to fight? Oh my gosh, wow. Wow, thank you. My 2023-2024 keynote speaking schedule is fully engaged. Earlier in October, I spoke at Lewis F. Cole Middle School. A special thank you and a big shout out to Principal William Diaz at William Diaz 8356 on YouTube. My very best friend, Crystal Vargas, also happens to teach 8th grade history at the school. So that made it even more special that I was able to address the entire 8th grade class. So grab a drink and some snacks and join me as we venture off to school. Chris is my family. Chris is my brother. He is my best friend. He is everything to me for real. I have chills even saying it out loud. In 2007, I met Chris on a party bus. Thanksgiving Eve. We were much younger then, and we were having a lot of fun together. Yeah, and it was Thanksgiving. It was, oh thank it was Thanksgiving. 2007. Yeah. Um, he has a program called I Choose Victory. I get emotional talking about you. Oh, Chris. <laughs> You're gonna get me going. Stop, stop. It's okay. It's okay. Life is a beautiful thing. And when someone who is sitting in a wheelchair can tell you that life is still beautiful, it hits different. You guys are very young. It may not hit the way it hits for us adults, but I promise you, this is something you'll remember for the rest of your life. So I present to you my best friend, Christoph, who is just the best. <laughs> but I have been living with an illness for most of my life. I was born typically healthy. I had no issues at birth. In fact, I met a lot of my milestones early. I was walking early, I was talking early, so when I collapsed at home after a karate class at the age of six back in 1990, my parents were completely stunned. They had no idea what was wrong with me or why this had happened to me. They rushed me to the hospital, and still, when I got to the hospital, doctors had no idea what was wrong with me. They couldn't explain it. They started to run some tests, and they found out that I was in heart failure. At that time, I had an emergency life-saving pacemaker implanted. But that's very rare for somebody that's so young. Usually you see that in older people or people that have heart disease later in life. Being a kid, as I'm sure you guys know, you worry about what your friends are gonna think, your peers. I was really nervous about people looking at me like I was weak or the sick kid in school. So I did everything that I could to hide my illness and the things that I was going through throughout my childhood. When I was 16 years old and I was going through puberty, my body just could not handle the changes and my heart became even weaker. The doctors told me that I needed a heart transplant. I'm sure you can imagine at the age of 16 how scary that was and just difficult to go through. The most important thing to me was school, so I still studied hard and worked hard, even throughout my transplant. And I worked so hard that I was even accepted an early decision to Columbia University. Thank you, thank you. So I had my first heart transplant, 
and I was going through life now feeling better than ever. I was living in New York City, I was having the time of my life in Columbia, but unfortunately, I was having a little too much fun. Please consider joining my membership where I will be posting exclusive Q&A sessions from this season's keynote speaker events. Being that I do not have dialysis on Tuesdays and Thursdays, those are the days that are for the business of managing victories. All of the abundance that I've received from my seminars, my book, my short documentary, your generous donations to the GoFundMe, platform relaunches, and my life coaching has helped me to realize the importance of maintaining success just as much as my health in order to survive. So please, continue showing your support by subscribing, following, liking, commenting, sharing, donating, renting, and purchasing my short documentary, It Started With The Heart, a Sugar Beach digital production on Vimeo by DocuMarket in an effort to help me raise much needed awareness and inspire millions on their own personal road to victory. I started to get into drinking, I started to get into drugs, and I was also not taking my medicine the way that I was supposed to. I started to miss doses of my medicine, I started to take them late, and I ended up putting my heart into rejection. Four years after my first heart transplant, I got the difficult news that I was gonna need a second heart transplant. My second heart transplant, I spent seven months in the FCU. And at that time, my kidneys failed. I was on dialysis for two and a half years before getting a kidney transplant. At the age of 27, I started to feel a tingling in my toes, and eventually it was found out that I have an extremely rare muscle disease called myofibrillar myopathy. Unfortunately, at this time, there's no treatment, there's no cure, and it's a progressive disease that slowly weakens your muscles over time. I sit here before you, 40 years old, I can barely do anything for myself now. I need somebody to assist me from everything, from getting dressed, showering, going to the bathroom, everything. But losing all of my independence and being in a place where I literally have to depend on other people to survive is extremely scary. But I've also realized that I'm very fortunate to be in a place where I have people who love me and care about me enough that they are willing to help me. And I say that because it's so important for all of you to realize that you have to be kind, you have to be empathetic, you have to look out for one another. You know, not just your family and the people that are really close to you, but even strangers, people that you don't know, if you see somebody struggling, it's very important to kind of reach out and just be there for one another. It costs nothing to be kind. And I'm telling you that throughout my life, yes, my strength and my internal positivity has really gotten me through some of my toughest and darkest moments. But I couldn't have done it without the support of my family, my friends, and my community. Life is hard. People do not prepare you for the hardships of life, the challenges that are yet to come. But I'm telling you that you have to be ready for that. You have to be ready for things to happen in your life that will completely turn it upside down. And it's up to you to fight through that. It's up to you to make up your mind that you're never going to give up no matter what the challenge is. I look at you guys and I know that you are going to go on and accomplish some incredible things. But that doesn't protect you from the challenges of life. Life is going to break you. Life is gonna break you emotionally. Life is gonna break you spiritually. Life is gonna break you financially. 
Life is going to test you in ways that you can never imagine. That's what life has done to me. And yet I choose never to give up. I choose to continue to fight. And I choose victory every single time.